Today, dear family, in this particular, this is one of the most, in my estimation, important things that I've ever discussed and even attempted to share publicly with you all, believers who would chime in, those who study and feed upon the Most High's word and come to the eternal well of living water that you might be what? That you might be soaked, that you might sup with the Most High in Hamashiach. So dear family, in this part two of the two women in Revelation, speaking of what? Speaking of Israel being the bride, being that woman in Revelations 12, which we know through Christian dogma and through through the replacement theologist that they have pushed upon us. And when I say us, they pushed upon and taught the remnant of that woman's seed who was striving to keep the commandments, taught us that that woman was the church, this new entity. And, you know, we've talked about the dispensationalism that some of them, when I say them, some of those who, who sprung forth from the other woman, the other woman, which was what? In Revelation chapter 17 and verses 5, says that she was the mother harlot and the filth or the abominations of all of the world. And the whole world sat down with her to fornicate and to commit adultery, spiritual adultery against the creator of the heavens and of the earth. And so, dear family, this is what this boils down to today. I truly pray that our Heavenly Father, that he looks down from his holy habitation as he beholds and see his sons and daughters truly striving to break off, break off the yoke of bondage and the flood of lies that was spewed after the woman who cried out and travailed in Revelations chapter 12 and verses three, speaking of Israel, that woman, the woman in Revelation 17 was the strange woman, was mysterious Babylon. And today we're going to talk about in this study, and there's no way, dear family, that on my own volition or by my own intuition or through my own merits relay to you the importance and, and how serious that it is uh, when it pertains to the times that we're living in. in. In the book of Revelation 17, the blood of the saints were found in her, and she persecuted, she persecuted the saints of the Most High, and then she put herself up. And so to this day, when we talk, and in the world that we live in, when we talk to our brothers and sisters who have been impacted by the things that were done, which you would call millennials, a millennium is a thousand years, thousands of years ago, that that same woman ties to, remember she rolled on a scarlet color beast, she rolled on an, on an empire, right? She rolled on the dragon. So she puts herself up as masking a rating around this feel-good doctrine and saying these things while deceiving and lying in wait to shed blood. And not only that, but to do what? I mean, to seduce the Most High's holy people, okay? Starting with the priests and the seers or prophets, if you will, down to his very, to the very down to, to the very seed to try to eradicate them and to replace them and get them to rebel against the Most High. So dear family, we're going to go in today and I truly pray, please, if you're listening right now, whether you're live right now or you come into this video at a later time, please, dear family, take heed to what you're about to hear and what you're about to see, because through much labor, through much toil through much spending much time before the most high that this revelation is being put forth for your eyes to see if you want to see for your ears to hear if you want to hear so just double check it and truly dear family don't allow anything to distract you from what's you about to behold we're going into history world history the two women in revelation the consummation to all who might be chiming in. Um, Shabbat Shalom. I pray that today's message helps to really strengthen your soul. 
that it edifies you and that it gives you clear insight to the, the deception, dear family. I, I'm praying, I'm praying for the power from on high. This revelation that has been given to us, dear family, is something, it's something to, to really break the yokes, to really break the bonds of being bondage to that, the powers that should not be, that the time, that the enemy knows that it, he has a, that his time is short. So they are doing everything and have done everything since their inception, since our fall, to really to try to do what they can to, to eradicate, to control, and to conquer that which is ours. In the book of Deuteronomy 11, I won't quote the exact verse, but it says, wherever your feet stomp upon, that shall be yours. Now, I know, and that you all know that we've read in Second Ezra chapter 6, that the the world was created for Israel, right? And Ezra was asking the Most High, if it was created for us, then why is it that? And uh, it's from, from verse fifty-five. It was created for us. If you have chose us as your one righteous plant, and you have lifted us up, then how is it that the other nations domineer and rule over us? Well, you'll come to find out. The dear family is because we broke the law, the law which cannot err, the law of life that cannot be extinguished, meaning it cannot be put out. And there's not many. There, there's Moses, Masha, and in Second Barak, Barak, it tells us that Moses lit the lamp, and there was few who come after Moses to follow that example. Why well, I like to say in this day and age, it's even fewer, and so. There's, there's many deceptions in the Bible tells in Revelations chapter two that in verses 24, many have not known the depths of Satan. They couldn't believe some of the things that they're actually involving themselves in that is shrouded and rooted in paganism, or, which is Satanism, which is idolatry. So dear family, what you see on before your screen right here is the prayer of Barak. And here, He's saying that, lead this organically, starting from verses one. I know you don't see it on the screen just yet, but it says, and it came to pass that after the seventh day, I prayed before the mighty one and said, O oh, my power, thou summonest, listen, the advent of the times. Wow. And they stand before thee. So the most high sees everything. He remembers the beginning, the creation. He also remembers what he had determined at the end, his judgment. If we go back two, three weeks ago, we talked about in Psalms chapter 33 and verses five, how the Most High loves righteousness and judgment. So it's telling us here in Second Barak that he summons the advent. That word advent meant a coming the coming of the times. Now, how does that relate to what we're talking about today about the two women in Revelation, the consummation? Because you will find out that, dear family, this all leads to a time. Daniel was shown a time of the end. And believe it or not, dear family, we are living in it and have been living in it. Okay. For some, and, and, and again, I'm not stating that I'm not giving some prophecy of when the, la the final day is going to come. I don't know. Okay. But what I do know is that the Most High showed us through the dearly beloved Son of His love, He showed us the times and seasons that we can look at and be able to see the condition of the world and also to go into His Word, dear family. And as we go into His Word, He would be giving revelation to us about how to prepare, how to survive these, you know, these desolations. Remember that was given to the woman. Listen to this. It said, and to the woman was given wings of a great eagle. The Bible tells in Isaiah chapter uh, 40, those who wait on the most high shall mount up on wings like eagles. That's prophetically. So in other words, dear family, that the most high is going to lift us up. And though it tells us in Isaiah 59, in verses 19, that when the enemy shall come in like a flood, that the most high will lift up a standard. So we will be able to see the standard to be able to see the comparison 
between these two women in Revelation. Now, so as the Most High states or in, in Second Barak, chapter 48, verses 2, O my power, thou summonest the advent of the times, and they stand before thee. Thou causes the power of the ages to pass away. So that means everything in the world is going to be burnt with fervent heat. The things that we build and we spend our time in trying to build ourselves up, these things are going to pass away, and they do not resist thee. Look what it says. Now, let me make this a little bit bigger on the screen if I can. So you're all able to see this. Really, I want you to see this good. And I want you to get this, those who are, are making a point to be here. Okay. Verses two right now. Thou arrangest the method of the seasons and they obey thee. Verse three. Thou alone knowest the duration of the generations and thou revealest not thy mysteries to many. So many people, even though that I've been telling, I've been shouting from the mountaintops for many years. How many times have this word gone right over? How many times has the enemy had got people preoccupied and totally, totally missed or, or totally uh, blocked out everything that was being told? Though it has to do with the end, has to do with their well-being, the well-being of their families. In, their, in future generations that the Most High allots it to, to be so. 